So far we have seen that a rigid body in planar motion has three degrees of freedom. Translation along x-axis, that along y-axis and the rotation about the z-axis. Of course these three motion components may take place together. So the general motion is a combination of the three. But at any given instant the motion of the body can be analyzed as pure rotation. Of course, the center of this rotation is not fixed. It shifts from moment to moment and therefore we call that center as the instantaneous center. We also saw a simple construction for finding that instantaneous center by dropping perpendiculars to the direction of velocities. And uh, once we have the center, we can also figure out the instantaneous angular velocity, which again might change from moment to moment. And once we have this data, we could figure the velocity of any point in that body. We also saw that if we have two bodies in general planar motion, then we can find their instantaneous centers, connect these with a straight line. And on that straight line, we would have a point whose velocity would be the same whether it is part of one body or the other. And this we analyzed by staying away from both the bodies. So the observer was not part of any of these bodies. Now if we place ourselves on say the green body, it will appear stationary. And so the velocity of point C on it will become zero. And therefore the velocity of the coincident point C on the red body would also become zero. But the red body is not at rest, it's moving. And if a moving body has a point with zero velocity, it must be its center of rotation, at least at that moment. And therefore, this point C is the instantaneous center of this red body as observed or with reference to the green body. By symmetry, C becomes the instantaneous center of the green body with reference to the red body. So this point C is called the relative center of these two bodies. And where do we find this relative center? As seen earlier, it lies on the line that joins the instantaneous center of the two bodies. This result in its generalized form is called Kennedy's theorem. Kennedy's theorem talks about three relative centers of three rigid bodies. We can see the two rigid bodies, the red and the green here. But there is also a third body on which the observer is standing and because of that it appears fixed. In fact the instantaneous center of the green body that we have here is actually a relative center between the green and the fixed body. Same about the instantaneous center of the red one. So Kennedy's theorem says that if we have three bodies say body A, B and C then the relative centers of A and B, B and C, C and A would be in one straight line. Here are some useful results, special cases and the notation that we'll be using for relative centers. Suppose we have two bodies or two links, number one and number two, and they're connected to each other with a revolute pair. Then that pin joint itself becomes the relative center of the two because one body will be rotating relative to the other with that pin as the center. And this is the notation we will use for relative centers I12, I for instantaneous centers and 1, 2 stand for the two bodies link 1 and link 2. For links 1 and 2 here, the guide and the slider, the relative center lies at infinity on a line perpendicular to the guide. Because a straight line is nothing but an arc of an infinite circle. So its center lies at infinity. Here is how we can express Kennedy's theorem. Suppose we have links 1, 2 and 3 connected with revolute pairs like this. Then we have uh, centers I12 and I13 over here. And the relative center of link 2 and 3 would be located on the line joining I12 and I13. Finally, here is an example of using Kennedy's theorem. So we have a four bar linkage with one, two, three, four as the links connected with revolute pairs. The revolute pair themselves become the instantaneous centers I12, I23, 34 and 14. 
and connecting the centers I23 and I34 give us one locus of I24 and joining these two centers I12 and 14 give us another locus of 24 so wherever they intersect we locate the center I24 